Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at these mouse pads from Strike Me. We've got links in the description just below if you're interested in purchasing, and if you are a reseller, you can get them exclusively at Goliath Computing. Before we go on to the main video, if you would do us a favour, click that like button, subscribe, click the bell as well. And that way you'll get notifications of new videos and live streams we do. Again, doing all these things helps support the channel and helping to support the channel allows us to release more videos, better quality videos and more content exclusively just for you. Okay, we're looking at the Strike Me gaming mouse pads. The larger one is a Pro and the other one is not. I'm not sure what makes it the difference, probably just the size and the thickness, but otherwise the specifications on the website are pretty much exactly the same. The smaller one is 320 millimeters, so that's 320 millimeters by 270 millimeters and two millimeters thick, where the larger one is 770 millimeters by 295 and three millimeters thick. As you can see from the box, the artwork's very similar, as in the design of the box and so forth, but the artwork on the mats is different. They do have a cutout with little holes in, so you can fill the actual grain as well. It's quite a smooth grain, does have, uh, doesn't seem to be rough in any way or form, which is good because some of them can feel, feel a little bit rough. And it tells you on there, uh, obviously the large one says it's a large size, uh, high density material and waterproof design. Uh, on the smaller one it says it's small and again high density design. doesn't mention anything about the waterproof but it may do on the back. So let's have a look at the back of the boxes. So the large one's got lots of different languages down there. doesn't really say a huge amount other than uh, the dimensions, which we've already mentioned, uh, anti-slip rubber base and so forth. And the smaller one doesn't have all those different languages, but it does have a, a picture of the map with the dimensions on there, uh, and it tells you pretty much the same sort of information again. So it says it's a cloth surface on uh, the smaller one. I'm presuming the other one is as well. On the side of the boxes, let's turn them both over. As you can see, the large one says large size, high quality anti-fray stitched edges and enhanced control and comfort. Obviously, that's when you're using it. And then the smaller one basically says uh, perfect mouse tracking and you've got the high density information there, smooth and stable, as well as information on there for optimized tracking accuracy and all that. So pretty much what you'd expect to see on mouse boxes. Okay, so we've got both of the mouse mats out of the packaging, and as you can see, this is what they look like. In the one, believe it or not, the smaller box, you've got the smaller mouse pad with a manual, and the larger one, you've got a large mouse pad with a manual. Pretty straightforward. The main difference I see between both from straight away is the stitching on the large one where there's none on the small one. But before we get too much into details about that, we do have some manuals which are pretty useless. For example, let me just read out what it says on this one for usage. You put the mouse on the mouse pad to make your mouse point accurately. Well, no shit. So, that gives you a rough idea. So, that's the manual. Why they need a manual to tell you that, I have no clue. I'd rather them put a QR code on the box if they really have to do anything, where people have to scan it if they really want to see a manual and information about the warranty. Well, no one ever reads. You're just wasting paper, wasting the environment. Get rid of it. Do a QR code. We're in 2021. Right, so you've got the small mouse map, so it's ideal for putting a mouse on, so just to give you a rough idea, so you get your mouse, put it on, and you move it around. That's how it works. Pretty straightforward. Didn't really need a manual to tell me how to do that. On the bottom, it has got a rubberized bottom, so it stops it sliding, but because there's no stitching around the edge, what I find a lot on mats like this is when you tend to rub your arm or your wrists over the edges, they do tend to roll up, as you can probably see on the camera there. Uh, and on top of that, the, can the actual material can come away from the rubberized bottom. I'm not saying it will happen with these, 
but that's what I do tend to find with other ones which haven't got the stitching. If I'm going for a mouse mat these days for myself, personal use, I'll always go for the stitching. It may cost a couple of pounds more, but it's worth it, especially when you look at the size of them. You can put a keyboard and a mouse on there and you've got plenty of room. So that's the small one that's got the rubber bottom on. Let's have a closer look at the larger one. So here's the larger one, as we said, it has got that braiding around the edge all the way around. No RGB lighting on these, you can get some from different manufacturers and I'm not sure if these guys actually make uh, any RGB versions, but that's totally up to you. But to be honest with you, I tend to find by the time you've got your keyboard and everything on there, a lot of time you can't see the RGB lighting and over... As time goes by, you tend to find the colouring tends to fade a little bit, but it's got nice colouring. The print on the actual mat doesn't actually affect how it feels, so it's not like it's uh, painted on top of it is probably the best way. It seems to be the colouring is in with the fabric itself, which is good. You may see it look like it's curled up at the edge. That's just because it's been rolled up in a, inside a box. Give it a few days, this should settle down and flatten out. So it's usually the normal case. Again, the bottom, you've got rubberized bottom, but that stitching is the advantage. It stops the corners. It also stops them rolling up when you're moving your wrist over them. And on top of that, it also stops them peeling away from the rubber base. So in theory, this should last you quite a good amount of time. It's got a nice feel to it when you are running your mouse on top of it and again this is a strike me mouse so if you're interested we have done a review about it you can get your mouse and just slide it back and forth it's not too noisy some mats you can find make a real whooshing noise as you slide your mouse over it does make a little bit of noise i've not come across one what's silent but it's not bad considering to be honest with you it should give you some nice accuracy on there and it should be quite nice i, I won't be afraid to use one of these mats myself mm -hmm.